Whatever you want, I'll do it. Lord, whatever you want, I'll give it. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I say to whatever, whatever, whatever. Hello, my dear friend. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. It's me, Bishop John R. Stevenson, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of The Shepherd's Heart. Let's pray together. God, I pray for every person that's under the sound of my voice right now who has chosen to dedicate themselves to this broadcast and to hear what it is that you are saying to us in this hour, this new season that you have brought us in. Yeah, we, we haven't forgotten, Father. I hope they haven't. They're in a new season and everything that I'm talking to them about now is to help them to maximize the new season, to be able to, to, to obtain the new season, everything that's in the new season. So God, I pray over their hearts and their minds right now, Father, that they will not allow the enemy to deceive them, that they will keep their eyes and their ears open so that they can see and hear what the Spirit is saying to the church in this hour. I don't know what it is that you have for everyone. I just know what it is that you have for, for us, for us, those of us who have decided this is my word from God. This is what God is saying to me. It's registering in my spirit. I know it to be true. I know that this is the season that I'm in. And God, I thank you so very, very much. Thank you so much. I thank you so very much for, again, allowing me to be in your space. God, I, I give you glory for each and every person. I don't take it lightly and I don't take it for granted. I thank you for each and every life that you've made me responsible for. I know the responsibility that I have to this broadcast, to this audience, to this congregation. And so I thank you, God, as you continue to provide for your people, as you continue to protect and watch over your people. I thank you for the anointing that rests upon my life to preach and teach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with power and authority. Rain down on your people today. Rain down on your people today. Set your people free today. Let no one leave, leave our time together bound by anything. Set your people free today. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, friends. Say, I'm free in Jesus' name. Come on, say it, friends. Say, I'm free in Jesus, in Jesus' name. We're still dealing with the subject, I will trust in thee. And last episode broadcast, we was together. We talked about uh, why we could uh, trust God is because God is not a liar. <clears throat> we could put our trust in him because he's not a liar. He's, uh, he, he's worthy. God is worthy. And because he's not a liar, because he's not a liar, he's not a deceiver, which is what uh, Sennacherib sent uh, Ramshackle to tell Hezekiah uh, in Isaiah chapter 37, verse number 10. He said, don't let the God that you, you put your trust in deceive you to make you believe that you're not going to be given over into the hands of the king of Assyria. <laughs> so let's take a look. We ended in, in, in uh, Isaiah 37 and 17. But I want to take you somewhere. Uh, Jeremiah. Yes, Lord, I will. Yes, Lord. So, so before we go to, instead of going to Jeremiah, let's go back. Let's go back to, to Psalm 56. Psalm 56. Psalm 56. And listen what it says in Psalm 56. Last time we were together, we started in Psalm 56, and I read verse uh, 1 through 4. When I started verse number 3 and number 4, as we see the transition in the psalmist, as he go from saying, watch what he says. Remember I said to you, we have to make a conscious decision to trust God. If we don't do that, then we'll never trust God. Uh, and nobody can trust God for you. You have to trust God for yourself. You have to have faith in God for yourself. Here's what the scripture says. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. <clears throat> and so he's saying, he said, when I find myself in fear, when I find, uh, I find that fear has, I've allowed fear because fear comes, I allow fear. Fear don't just come, friend. I allow fear to come. Where faith is, fear cannot reside. But where fear is, faith cannot reside. They can't cohabitate together. Either one is there or the other. 
either one or the other. And so he says, at what, he said, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And so in other words, anytime I find myself in fear, which is something God has told me not to do, I've commanded you to be of a good courage. To be of a good courage, I've commanded you not to fear, but be courageous and be of a good courage. And then he says in verse number four, we see his growth. We see where he's grown, where he's transitioned, because it says, in God will I praise his word, in God I have put my trust. I will not, watch this, I will not fear what flesh can do to me. <clears throat> so we see the growth, we see the transition there. We talked about the reason why uh, we can trust God is not because he's omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. I mean, that's, that's good that we know that about him, okay? But he can be all that and not be trustworthy. But because he's not a liar, friend, that's what tops it off, friend. That's, that's the key to everything. The key is that God is not a liar. We got some powerful people in our country. We got some powerful countries in our world, but they liars, friend. We got a bunch of politicians. They got power, friend. No, they're not omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. No, they're not, friend, but, but I, I wanna show you, we got people that's in places that can do things for people that can change your life, but they liars. They got power, but they liars, friend. Our God, is, he's got power, and all power belongs to God but he's not a liar, friend. That's why you can trust God. That's why you can put your faith in God. That's why he ought to be the God of your life. That's why, friend. And I gave you verses of scripture to support that. The deceiver is the devil. Jesus is not the deceiver. He said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man come to the Father but by me. Thy word is true. Jesus' name is the word. His name is the word. And thy word is true. So that means Jesus is true. Because he's the word incarnate. He's the word made flesh. God in the flesh. Because he's the truth and cannot lie, friend. It's impossible for him to lie. We gave you a scripture for that. Numbers 23, 19. Titus 1 and 2. Hebrews 6 and 18. Go check the scriptures out for yourself, friend. You can trust God because God is not a liar. Now let's move. We move from verse 10. We was at verse 14. We want to see how uh, Hezekiah puts his trust. He makes a conscious decision, just like the psalmist did. He make a conscious decision to put his trust in God, to remove his trust from whoever he had faith and trust in before. He's, he's, he's personally taking that, purposely rather, taking his trust or, or, or faith from, and confidence from wherever it was and putting it in the Lord now. So Hezekiah gets the report. He reads the report, verse number 14, and he takes it. He goes to the house of God, friend. Listen, I know some of y'all don't like this when bishops say it, but there are some things, friend, that you cannot accomplish, you will not accomplish outside of the house of God. Some things you have to go to the house of God in order to get it accomplished. I'm sorry, and I know that there's some teaching going on out here, and I know the enemy has got a lot of you believing that you're safe at home. You're not safe at home, friend. You're not safe at home. You're not safe at home. You've allowed fear to come in. You've allowed fear to come into your life, friend. And so now you're going to become a hermit. You're going to go up into the cave now. Friend, that... It says he went to the house of God, friend, and he spread it before God. And, and some of y'all going to get upset with me when I say this. God is not in a lot of y'all houses because, see, at home you live like you want to. Yeah, yeah, you, the, the majority of us, the, no, not us. I'm not putting myself in that. I'm not putting myself in that now. The majority of you are not disciplined enough. You're not disciplined enough. There's too many distractions in your house. Everything that can be a distraction is in your house. Oh, friend. Everything you ain't supposed to have is in your house. You're worshiping and serving everything but God in your house. 
even to the point to where you serving and worshiping your house because your mind is so fixed on what I'm going to do to my house. I'm going to do this to my house. I'm going to redo this to my house. I'm going to fix my house. I'm going to do this. You in your yard, cutting your yard, trimming your yard, trimming your tree. It's, you're worshiping your house. Some of you, the only time you hear the word is when you at church. You don't even open your Bible at home. Truth going to make you free, friend. He took it to the house of God. There are some things that are not going to happen for you until you get to the house of God. I hate to be the bearer of bad news to you, but you've been run amok, friend. You've been deceived by the devil. God is not calling us congregations for nothing. God is not, God has not broken his church down to house churches. God hasn't done that. God hasn't done that. God is still raising up pastors, friend. And God is not raising up pastors to pastor their own families. You at your house, friend, you ain't going to church. You are not going to the house of God. You don't have a pastor, friend. You, you, you might want to really check yourself and see whether or not you're in the faith or not. For real. You don't have no desire to be in the house of God, to read around other people of God. I want you to check your salvation meter. No, you know, no, friend, no. God is not telling you to church at your house. God is not telling you that. Now, I understand that there are some folk who just can't go to church because of health reasons. But I'm not, I'm talking to those of you who can go to church, but you make every excuse not to go. Okay, well, that's why life is rotten for you. And that's why life is going to stay rotten for you. You have no desire to be around God, to be around the, the people of God. Watch this. We are many members that make up the body of Christ. And you don't want to be around the body of Christ? It's because you're not saved, friend. It's because you don't have a relationship with God. You done made up a relationship with God. You want to think you got a relationship with God. So you live how you want to live and you choose who you want to be around. <laughs> yeah. People like you, people that'll tell you, oh, you ain't got to go to church. You don't need to go to church. Yeah, I didn't say God didn't love you, friend, but God will love you and watch you go straight to hell, though. God, love makes salvation possible for you. I say his love makes salvation possible for you. He took it to the house of God, spread it before God, and he prayed, and he prayed. Everybody can't pray, friend. Everybody can't pray. And he prayed and he spoke to God. Then in verse 17, which is where we left off last week, he said this, incline thine ears, O Lord, and hear, open thy eyes. God is not sleeping. He's not deaf, but he didn't know. He only knew what he knew about God. I know better. God don't slumber nor sleep. Watch this now. He don't have no problem with his seeing or his hearing. Hallelujah. Incline thine ears, O Lord, hear. Open thine eyes, O Lord, and see. And hear all the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to me, to, sent to approach, I mean reproach, the living God. Watch this now. Of a truth, I love this, friend. Watch this now. He say, of a truth, the king of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their countries. Watch, friend, and he's getting ready to tell us why that happened, why that was possible for them to be destroyed and conquered by Sennacherib. Watch this now in, in verse number eight. I'm in verse number uh, 19. Watch what he says. And have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods. They wasn't gods, friend. You see, he said they did. They were able to do that because they wasn't gods. Listen to what he says. But the works of men's hands, they were wood and stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. Oh, come here, friend. If your God can be destroyed, it's not God, friend. If somebody can destroy your God, that's not God, friend. Oh, listen, 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 listen. He said, of a truth, Lord, the king of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their countries and have cast their gods into the fire for they were no gods. You see, what he, he said they was able to do that because they were no gods. They were able, Sennacherib was able to conquer them because they didn't have no God. Okay, 
Because if you can conquer my God, friend, then you can conquer me. But you can't conquer me because I'm victorious in Christ. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror, friend, in Christ Jesus. The devil can't defeat me. Flesh can't defeat me. Watch this, friend. Watch this now. He said, they were the work of men's hands, wood and stones. Therefore, they have destroyed them. Okay. Okay, now watch this now because notice what they said. Their gods, their gods are made of wood and uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 64. Let's walk this out. Let's walk this out. Because see, God said they was going to do this kind of stuff. Uh, that is Deuteronomy 28 and 64. <clears throat> Watch what it says right here in Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shall serve other gods, which, which neither thou nor thy father have known even wood and stone. You're going to serve gods of wood and stone. You, you see that, friend? You see that, friend? You see that? Watch this now. Watch this now. Watch this now. Uh, let's look at verse number. Hold on. Let me get over here right quick. Let's look at verse number 36. Deuteronomy 28, 36. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thy shall set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy father have known. And there shall thy serve other gods, wood and stone. We have to decide, we have to decide, friend, if your God, if the God you serve is wood and stone, then, the, then, then you're going to be destroyed, friend. You, you have to decide that you're not going to worship wood and stone. You're not going to worship. God said to us when he gave us the Ten Commandments that we're not supposed to worship any graven images, friend, that represent anything that he's created, that he's God and he's God alone and we ought to worship him and him alone. Okay, okay, I understand. I understand. <laughs> chapter 4, Deuteronomy chapter 4. It's in your Bible, friend. It's what, what, chapter 4, verse 28. Chapter 4, verse 28. I'm going to start at verse number 26. Look what it says. He said, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land whereunto you go over Jordan to possess it. You shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. Watch this, why? And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether the Lord shall lead you. Watch this now. And there you shall serve God's, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. You worshiping God that, that can't even help you, friend. That can't help you. Okay, watch this now. Uh, Ezekiel 20 and uh, 32. Ezekiel 20 and 32. Watch this now. Ezekiel 20 and 32. And that which cometh unto your mind shall not be at all that ye say, we will be the heathen as the, yeah, yeah, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. Friends, are you listening to, are you listening to, are you listening to scripture? This is where, this is where their gods are. But their gods, listen, they didn't create them stone and everything. They, they got eyes and everything. They got mouths and everything, but, but the, they can't speak. They can't hear. They can't see. They can't help them. You've decided that you want to serve gods that you've been deceived that can help you. But the Lord had me to say to us at the beginning of last session that if the God that you serve is not contributing to your life, then it's not the real God. If the God you serve, you got to die for that God, that's not the real God. If the God you serve is not, 
is not an asset to your life. It's not adding anything to your life. But sorrow, that's the wrong God, friend. That's the wrong God. Okay, I hear you, Holy Spirit. I hear you. Now we can go to Jeremiah chapter 17. Watch this now. Now we can go to Jeremiah 17. Hear the Lord. Hear the Lord. Chapter 17. Watch this, friend. Watch this. Let's look at verse 7 and 8. Watch this, friend. Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. You, you have to determine that you're not going to worship. Your God is not wood and stone, friend. Your God is not wood and stone. God created wood and stone. God did that. We don't worship wood and stone, friend. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by rivers of water that spread out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh. But her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. You see that, friend? Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. Hezekiah putting his trust in the Lord causes him to be blessed, friend. Watch this now. Watch this now. I, I'm going to read something to you. Verse number 20 says, Now therefore, O Lord God, our God, save us from, from his hands, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only. He said, do this so that they will know that you're a God and you're God only. And see, those of us who understand who God is, we don't worry about the enemy because we have eternal life. We're not worried about, I would pray that we haven't allowed fear to come in. Where faith is, fear can't live, friend. Hezekiah put his trust in God. He put his trust in God, friend. He said, this is why the king of Assyria was able to destroy them because they served things that was not God. Look at the answer that God gives to Hezekiah starting at verse number 33. Therefore, thus said the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it. But, I mean, sorry, by the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into the city, said the Lord. You see that? Because he put his trust and his faith in God. God says, I'm going to take care of that. He will not come in the city. Watch what he says. He will not come in the city, says Lord, for verse 35, for I will defend this city. Y'all, come on here. Come on, friend. He said, for I will defend it. Listen what he said. Verse 35, for I will defend this city to save it for, for my own sake and for, for my servant, David's sake. You see, friend, oh, Lord Jesus, we fight in battles that we're not supposed to fight. We fight battles because we won't take it to God because we don't have the kind of faith and trust in God that we should. So we fight our own battles and then we come to God and we ask God, Lord, why did you allow that? No. Why did you do what you did? Why didn't you consult me? Why didn't you come to me with it? Why did you go out on your own and try to do it? Why did you go and tempt him to do that? Well, look what it says. Verse 35 again. For I would defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Verse number 36. Then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and fourscore and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpse. You, you see, friend, when they woke up in the morning, so see, when I put my trust in God, guess what I do? I go to sleep, friend. I enter into the rest of God. I walk in the peace of God and I let God fight my battle because that's what the scripture says. 
You have to decide that you're going to put your trust in God, friend. That's a decision that you're going to have to make. I will trust in thee. Blessed is the man that put his trust in God. Blessed is that man, friend. Have you put your trust in God? Have you placed your faith in God? Are your, are, are your God still stone and wood? Stone and wood. We're not even dealing with the gold and the silver today. We're just dealing with the stone and the wood. And, and the scripture's already shown them the stone and the wood that, that you, they got eyes because you've carved eyes, you've carved lips, ears, and all those things in your gods that you've carved, that you've engraved, but they can't help you, friend. When was the last time the God you served helped you? Because see, unless your God is contributing to your life, unless your God is an asset to your life, you're serving the wrong God. You're serving the wrong God. God says that he will defend. Come here, friend. Come here, friend. He say he will defend you. He will take care of you, friend, if you put your trust in him. Take it before God. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 7. One of my favorite passages of scripture. When I found this in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 7, when I found this. Come on, friend. Come on, do this with me right quick. Let me show you this because you need to see this right here. Let me get in the right place right here. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 7. Watch what it says right here. Watch what it says. For what nation is there so great who has God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? You see, friend, every great nation, they're great because God is involved in their life. Every life is great because God is involved in the life. If God, I don't care how good it looked, friend, how good it seems to you, because the grass always looks greener on the other side till you get to the other side. It's only till you get to the other side. Friend, unless you're calling upon God, God is not obligated to do anything in your life or for your life. Put your trust in him, friend. Put your trust in him. Call upon him and he'll be there to help you. I promise you that, friend. Say it, friend. I will trust in thee, Lord. I will trust in thee. Friend, I got to wrap it up right now, but I thank you again for allowing me space in your life. Thank you for praying for Bishop. Thank you for praying for the station and thank you for all of your contributions. Thank you for your help. We love you and we appreciate it. And we need your help, friend. We really do. When I say we, I'm talking about the station. Bishop is not soliciting funds for the station, but I thank you so very, very much for every time that you have sold into this broadcast. I love you to life and know that Bishop is praying for you. Till I see you next time, friend. Have a good one, okay? Have a good one. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Whatever you want, I'll do it. Lord, whatever you want, I'll give it. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll say to whatever, whatever, whatever.